Welcome back to the Boardroom International Surfboard Show, Delmar Fairgrounds, San Diego, right there. Well, a little bit of instruction going on. Our boys at Foamy Z, the original one-stop surfboard supply shop in Westminster, helping out some people, giving them some ideas on shaping boards. Thank you, Foam EZ. Well, Todd, another guest. This one we have flown in at no expense all the way from Coolangatta, Australia. It costs us a lot of money. We used your credit card. Who do we have? Well, let's hope they don't actually bill us if you use my credit card. We got Craig Pitchers, AKA K Scat, former World Tour surfer and now giving back to the industry, working for JS Surfboards. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Todd. And uh, what have you been up to? Obviously, um, your partners in JS Surfboards. Tell us a little bit about JS Surfboards, how it got started. We know some of the world's best surfers ride those boards. We'll get into that in a minute, but tell us how you got started. Uh, with Jason, it was just a personal choice. Um, for me personally, after finishing the tour, uh, Jason was uh, shaping at that time with DHD under the Murray Burton brand in Coolangatta. And he came off an island in Queensland called Stradbroke. So uh, he just wanted to get a job sweeping up in the, in the factory to work his way into shaping eventually. And uh, from them, I think he, he really learnt well from the likes of Murray and fairly quickly picked up a, a good shaping skill and uh, started making a few boards for guys like myself who had competed just to get that feedback. It's really hard to get sometimes as a, an up and coming shaper. And, uh, and from there, I guess his wife and my wife spent time at school together and all of that. So after a few family barbecues, uh, ten, 10 years later, I ended up becoming uh, a part of the business and could see the potential from a sales perspective. Um, I spent 20 years with Billabong in sales and uh, you know, I could see the potential in that brand and uh, understanding as well that sometimes shapers don't get a chance to get the brand to the next level because of uh, you know, the time spent in production. And uh, there was a lot of frustrated retailers out there that were trying to get hold of the brand and um, would voice their concerns through me and then I thought, well, you know, I'd like to sort of lend as much of a hand as I can to try and get this thing to where it should get to. Awesome. <clears throat> What are we looking at right now? That looks like a beautiful board. Well, at, is. The, at the moment, we're looking at a, a board that's, we feel, you know, we're, I guess we've been pigeonholed over the years as being a, a board made for, for, for good waves. And uh, a lot of people still to this day don't realize, you know, just the broad spectrum of models that we make. But, um, you know, we like to sort of rest our hat on the fact that we do make good boards for good surfers for good waves. But this one over here is just one of those ones that's probably the most, uh, extreme version of a, a sort of like a pro model but something that's uh, got all the volume that you need in all the right places to still be able to perform at the levels of our you know pro team and what they expect but um, but also be able to overcome the conditions like california where it's a bit small a little bit you know a little bit gutless at times and hey, go uh, easy sorry <laughs> just pointing out the obvious yeah <laughs> but uh you know i guess a lot of our team riders sometimes do expect that we can make a board a go-to board when the waves do vary during the competitions we get a lot of guys you know outside of our team like julian wilson that will, will get boards off us and specifically use them when the waves are the conditions are better um, and then you'll see him run off to a mayhem or a channel islands when the when the conditions vary a little so that board there is really it's a it's a real meeting point board coming out of decent conditions still don't want anything too short and fat so all the the variances and volumes are all exactly in the right spot due in the market next week. Well, you touch on something there as far as team riders. Obviously, you guys have a fantastic team, and we can go into that in more detail in just a second. But you touch on something there. We had Matt Biolis with us earlier, yep. and the event just recently taking place, the Hurley Pro, he was his phone was off the hook. All yes. the pros wanted to sample his shapes, knowing that he's shaped for some of the world's best over the years for a break like Trestles. How busy are you guys during the Quickie Pro down there on the Gold Coast at Snapper and Diva and even Kira? Um, probably no busier in terms of team than any other time because uh, generally we specifically shape boards for our team only. But not just your team. You, like if I'm, hypothetically, I'm Kelly Slater, oh. I want a board because I know you guys specialize in that break. Does um, that not happen? And obviously, you know, Kelly's maybe not a good example, but the Brett Simpsons and you know, some of the other pros that are out there, and they might be sponsored by someone, but they have that relationship with a shaper that will allow them yes, to go out and sample. absolutely. Well, to answer that question, yeah, Jason's super busy. The lead up, the months before that. Um, and also the Quickie Pro time is a really busy time retail-wise, particularly on the Gold Coast. So team always takes 100% priority. Yeah, as a shaper. Um, as a shaper. Therefore, you know, punching those boards out with priority often puts 
production aside, when it comes to you know, store surfboards going out into the distribution, it puts a fairly big dent in our, uh, in our production space and uh, can also uh, offer a little bit of unrest in the old retail environment. Because you're looking at 40 or 50 boards a week pushing through on top of what you would otherwise do for other stores. So yeah, it's definitely, and it's not just the Quickie Pro now, it's got Hawaii at the moment. So many boards getting made, put aside with priority to be shipped up and sent across to Hawaii so that when the guys land, and same with Europe, you know, getting boards to Europe is not easy. So there's a lot of preparation in getting boards to all of those events. Yeah. Okay, Craig Pitchers, former pro surfer, now co-partner with Jason Stevenson, correct? Correct. Give us a story about the tractor, the logo, the bulldozer. Well, uh, I'm not sure if Jason wants me to tell you this, but... Uh, because he wouldn't tell me the <laughs> trestles. I saw him and he said, I'm just a babysitter. I said, tell me about the, the bulldozer. I'll tell you the truth. He always Please wanted to be do. an earth mover, but he became a shaper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yes, it, the truth is his father was an earth mover, owned a, an earth moving company. Yeah. He had a rickety old tractor as his logo. And then Jason looked at the tractor and said, you know what, I could use that and just sharpen it up a little bit. Love it. And uh, something that could drive across the moon instead of the back paddock. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, let's talk about some of your team. Uh, Jack Freestone, uh, former what, two time, no, 2010 World Junior Champion, uh, Dusty Payne, Akalupo, Ace Bucket, and obviously a guy that you would love to win a world title. And he's waiting patiently, and he's number one in the world right now. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Joel Parkinson. His demands from a guy that just walks in and says, here's what I want. Are these boards similar to what Joel w would ride, to what your average experienced surfer would ride? Can it work? It's funny you should say that. You know, we've looked at some of the guys that have ridden our boards in the past, like Andy Irons was always a good candidate. Uh, Bruce Irons is still a team member, which we failed to mention before. But um, those three guys have always ridden boards or like the same sort of boards with the same dimensions. So what we found now with some of the different styles of surfing coming through now is what works for Joel doesn't work for Jack at all times. And um, there's definitely a little bit of variance going on at the moment with shaping different types of structures for different guys surfing differently. You know, as you know, modern, modern day surfing's changed incredibly. Um, you know, the concave movements, you know, moving concaves forward, where the concaves are kicking in now, where the flat spots are, where the tail kick is, where the pulls and the, and the templates are is all, it's all gonna blend in together and it's all changed. And, and I guess having a team like we've got and guys like Matt, you know, it's, it's just a, a blessing to have guys uh, with the ability to give you that feedback and hopefully the ability. Guys like Bruce, it's like, which one do you like? He goes, that one. What is it? He goes, I don't know, just show me one exactly the same. Didn't really help much, but um, there's definitely a little bit more, uh, you know, the feedback now is a little more precise and having managers and coaches, they're all looking, you know, a lot of those guys are super talented former surfers themselves, coming back with uh, really sharp, precise information that helps the shaper make those adjustments. Shapes coming off the machines these days, it allows us to make calculated decisions and, and precise results. Um, a lot of hand shaping going on here at the moment, but, uh, which is lovely and all, but the, the inconsistencies without having the, the machines um, for pro surfing would be disastrous these days. So, yeah, does that answer your question? I think it does. A, a real obvious one is uh, if somebody comes to you and says, I want a board, you're gonna first ask them your ability, where you're gonna surf and how much you weigh, correct? Those are the three yes. basic things. Yes. Where are you gonna surf? Obviously, when these guys are traveling the world, there are different breaks all over. How many boards a year do you maybe sh shape for Joel? Uh, it's no less than a hundred, and depending on depending on the like, for instance, in Europe right now, where boards are getting destroyed every minute, um, that would turn into 120. And have you ever had panic phone calls from surfers far overseas saying, "Send me five boards immediately"? <laughs> um, just the ones that are a little more disorganized. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, well, qu question for you: We're worldwide. Why uh, we are worldwide right now? Bit of a tongue twister, but knowing time-wise, you know, our, a bulk of our people watching right now are here ba based in the U.S. If I'm in Southern California or on the East Coast, as you pointed out, kind of lackluster waves on, on the average, and I want to buy a new board, a new JS. What model would I be looking at, or what style board would you direct me towards? I'm a guy that's about 165. You know, works 
40 hours a week, what do I need? Okay, well I'd go for middle of the road and generally we'd look at our best sales. We've got a, one model called the Revolution. It's got all the tricky carbon up the middle. It's got a flatter entry. Don't upsell me. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just mentioning our best seller and the reason yep. it is the best seller is because it's a, for a guy who's a bit of a weekend warrior. He wants something that's going to paddle pretty well. He wants, there's, there's been a lot of uh, people's ability moving upwards since yeah. GSI, the, the likes of them bringing a lot of boards into the market for learner guys that are now coming up to wanting a board like a JS or a, or a Channel Islands or a Lost or whatever. But that sort of guy is looking for a board still that's going to help him out a little bit more on the paddle side and have a little bit more outline curve and um, a little bit more volume for those types of conditions that you mentioned. But still, he wants to be able to walk down the beach with a board that he considers performance. And that's why he comes to a brand like JS, because we do have, I guess, that bit of a stigma. But we've got to be really mindful that a lot of guys are that caliber of person that require Absolutely. a little bit more foam. And but, fin yeah. setups, what are you seeing trending right now for the average show? Obviously, we saw Joel and Kelly in the semifinal riding four fin setups. Oh, it's blown me away. You know, to see Joel riding a four fin, he's adamant now that everything all the way through to his seven, six, and eight foot guns are going to be quads for good waves. One thing I can really see at the moment that I, I feel is a little bit up in the air is, the, you know, the templates. I think there's going to be a whole lot of development going on with not just the templates and, and, and the fin shapes, but the plug placement is going to become really important. And I think we're really in the infancy stages at the moment with all that. When quads were, you know, apparent back in the 80s, for Blasted. instance, the equipment wasn't to that level that it is now. So I think that we're still feeling ourselves out with all of that. And uh, I think it's quite exciting to think that, you know, there's a, there's a whole lot of room to move with fins as well as the equipment. How many glass ons? Does anybody require a glass on or a requested? You're talking to the wrong guy. We're all glass on there not so long ago. Okay, yeah. Now, but I mean, now, any of the pros? Uh, not anymore. There was that uh, got to go oh, glass yeah. on. Remember that? Our whole team was all set fins. But, uh, but now we've got the, 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 the kinetic racing fin brand. So you know what? It's just so much easier to have you know, a fin you can take out, put back in. And these guys are traveling with one, one or more extra boards now. So. Well, Scat, it's, thanks uh, so much for the insight. Your website, I know there's people out there wondering, they want to find out more about JS Industries. Yes. How do they do? Go to jsindustries.com. And, and it's uh, all there? It's, it's all there. Can I custom order a board there, or will it show me the local uh, retailers that I can go custom well, order? Well, you know, obviously through the local retailers. Okay. Uh, anything they come through us for, they can always talk to us personally, any tick of the clock, and we'll always guide them back to the friendly retailer, but hopefully with a little bit of advice and some information that can help them make a better choice. Well, Scat, thanks so much for your time. You're Best welcome. of luck in the rest of the show. Thank you very much. Coming up next, guys, we got a fantastic piece with Kelly Slater talking about MR. We've talked a lot about the fins and the setups right here in this interview with Scat. Well, coming up next, you're going to want to stick with us because Sean Madison, the one who put the guitar pick on the map, that little red fin that Kelly Slater uses on occasion on the World Tour, he'll be with us live. Dave Stanfield, Todd Klein, we'll be with you in just a minute. Stay tuned.